someday. Am I the only somebody with their plans on making it home someday? Anybody else want to make it home? Amen. Amen. Show your love to the members of the Zion Travel Squad that are with us. We position the journey all the way to St. Louis to be with us. His son, Jesus the Christ, the great head of the church, and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Anybody here know? Yeah. 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 The Holy Ghost. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. 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 I don't go anywhere without him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If he's not welcome, then I don't go. Yeah. 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 We're so grateful to God for being here to my dear friend, our honorees. Yeah. 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 Amen. Pastor Earl. Yeah. Yeah. And his lovely wife. Y'all show some love to our audience. Amen. Amen. I am, um, I'm always blessed to be in their presence. That's right. Um, your pastor is, is my friend. That's right. Um, I don't know any other way to put it, but, but he's my, my friend. Yes. I'm just so proud, so happy uh, to be here to be able to celebrate. I was coming, and I was going to come. Michelle and I, but, but folks started talking about they wanted to come, and, and uh, before you know it, we had a bus load and some car loads, and, and if you just came and get to St. Louis, just stand up wherever you are. Thank you. 
preach. Everybody needs a pastor. And we're here to celebrate your faithfulness in that work. And I just want to encourage you, man, to just keep on keeping on. I know Amen. the challenges that you're faced with. I know that what you've already come through. I know what this whole city has, has been through in the rebuilding process. When you were a few paces ahead, then all of a sudden you're way back there trying to make it back. I know all of that. But don't be discouraged because God is in the blessing business. Amen. And God is the, the chairman of comebacks. Amen. And he, I say he's the chairman of all comebacks. And if you want to make that comeback, just stick with my God. Amen. And, and, and he was, he's able to do it. Amen. And you have a lovely wife by this side, and she is your support. She's your help meet for real. Y'all think that together y'all going to be able to do wonderful things for the Lord. Amen. Now that was my my pastor's anniversary speech. <laughs> Glad to see my good friend, Pastor Bradford here. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 It's always happy to see him. Always happy. Now, now listen, um, I, I, we've been celebrating, and I just want to go ahead and preach, and, and I had to get that out of the way. So that was Pastor's anniversary. So now, can we have a word from the Lord? Amen. 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 Pastor's scripture that you all are very familiar with is in Psalm 107. I want to just lift up verse 2a in your hearing. Psalm number 107, verse 2a. That's the very first part of the second verse. Psalm 107. But before y'all get it, we'll be done. It simply says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's it. Amen. God be seated. Amen. I want to share with the church with my dear friend. Uh, we serve a God who can do it again. That's our subject. God who can do it again. Psalm 107 is the, the, the testimony of those who, like you and me, can sing the words of that song through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Amen. Yeah. Psalm 107. These, these 43 verses give us, y'all, a portrait of those old saints who've experienced some things that were not always pleasing, not always pleasant. But wow. these old saints can testify that God brought them out and then gave them victory, victory. over their circumstances. Right. Right. Psalm 107 is the reflection of of the people of Israel who came to understand that God had sustained them through some rock, rocky and rough periods in their lives. Y'all, these old saints give to us not simply an individualistic celebration, but they give to us a communal celebration. Because here, the community of saints have come together and they all together want to thank God for being so good, so good. to them. Right. So watch the text, because the text opens up with the first verse. And in verse 1 is what I want to call a communal expectation. It's when the Levites, y'all, when they stand before these people, when the worship leaders stand before these people, he says this. He says, well, what I want, want us all to do is to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Is that in y'all's Bible? Yeah, yeah. Psalm 107, verse 1. Yes, yeah, right. The Bible says in verse 1 from King James' version that we ought to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And please understand that Psalm 107 follows a pattern of songs. This song is actually the third song of a trilogy of songs beginning with Psalm number 105 wow. that call for the people of God to give thanks to God for who God is and for what God has done. And if you would dare to pick up your Bible every now and again and just start reading through the Psalms, when you get to Psalm 105 and start reading all the way through Psalm 107, you will see the same theme repeated over and over and over again. Okay, see, I know some of y'all are going to read it for yourself, so I'm just going to put out a couple of things for you in this trilogy, y'all. Psalm 105, verse number 1, opens up by saying, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name. Then if you get to Psalm 106, Psalm 106,
6 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And then as if to cap it all off, since the third time is the charm, y'all, Psalm 107 verse 1, the psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Now, now if you watch this, if you understand the history of the children of Israel, you'll come to understand that Psalm 105 in this psalm, the psalmist speaks to the people about their history from Abraham all the way until their entrance into the promised land. Right. And he says that God gave you the father of the faithful. Y'all remember his name is Abraham, Abraham right? Yeah. And that through this giving, you have received instructions that brought you all the way till you ended up in the promised land that God said he was going to give to you when he talked to brother Abraham. So in Psalm 105, that's all the psalmist wants them uh, to talk about is how God walks with his people from Abraham all the way to the promised land. And the psalmist closes it out by saying, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Okay, don't stop reading that. Psalm 106, because the truth is that the children of Israel made some mistakes and they made some missteps that they now wish they had never made. So then God had to exile them. Yeah, he wanted them to learn some things that they needed to learn, so he put them into what we call Babylonian exile. And while they were there, y'all, it was harsh and it was cruel, but they learned some things while they were there that made them a better people. So that even while they were in the midst of their exilic situation, y'all, God said through the psalmist, give thanks unto the Lord. That even while you are in your situation that you didn't like, God is still working on you as well as working in you to work some things out for you. And so in Psalm 106, he says, oh, give thanks. Well, then I tell you in Psalm 107, we are past the exile. Yeah, but we have passed all of those troubles, all the anxiety, all of the frustration. We're on the other side of those great burdens. And the psalmist says that now that you're on the other side of your trouble, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Okay, let me make a little plan for everybody. Before you got, I mean, I mean, before they got into their trouble, the psalmist says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And then after they got into trouble, and while they were still in the midst of their trials and their tribulations, he says, you ought to go ahead and give thanks unto the Lord while you are still in it, for his mercy endures forever. And show up after you to come out of your situation.
I don't know what y'all come to do, but I come to give thanks. Because you're the Lord. If you came for some other reason, you're in the wrong spot. Because when God's children get together, there ought to be at least one thing on everybody's mind. And that's to give thanks unto the Lord. For he is, anybody know his mercy? That's our communal expectation. But now, our communal expectation is a result of God's continual restoration. Because when you get past verse number one, you go into verse number two. Y'all didn't know that, but that's what you did. And the text reveals to us how God keeps on making ways. Some 
remember uh, that, that, that we ought to say this. That we ought to say thank you. And I'm not going to be able to get to all four of them, but I'm going to go as far as I can. <laughs> Psalm 107, four little scenes, four, four little experiences, if you will, that, that, that Psalm is this up for us that lets us know that God does not just deliver uh, once or twice or thrice, but that our God delivers over and over and over again. That God keeps on making ways for us. Is anybody here to testify with me that God did it again? Yes. Yeah. He did it again. Look with me, if you will, at the text. Because from the latter part of verse number two, all the way through to verse number five, the psalmist talks about the fact that they had some destitution to deal with. Yeah. They had to deal with some destitution. Verse two, King James says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry yeah. and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Yeah. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Verse 6. And he delivered them out of their distresses. Yeah. And verse 7. And he led them forth by the right way that, may, that they may go into a city of habitation. Yo, he's simply saying that, that there were some times when the people of God experienced destitution. Yeah. 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 There were some times when they couldn't handle all of their needs all by themselves. Well, I and, and I don't know I don't know if, if everybody in here has ever been there, but there's some folks sitting in these chairs on a Sunday morning who can testify that I've been destitute a time or two. That's right. yeah. and that there were plenty of times when I didn't have enough money to pay all of my bills. There were times when I didn't have enough food to feed me and my whole family. Yeah. There were times when I was homeless and maybe even set back. And it was a situation that I never anticipated. I didn't, I didn't count on it. If you didn't sleep through Katrina, if you didn't sleep through the recession that would just come out of us, there's some folk right now who took a major hit back then. And they thought that they had all of their stuff lined up. They had all of their ducks in a row, and then all of a sudden, the bottom fell out. And they would have never been broke before, but, but that's some folk in here who can testify that being broke ain't no fun. And it's some folk who can testify that sick ain't no fun.
God, I love God's people. I promise you, because God's people are pretty consistent, God. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah. Every time I, I go and raise up a point like this, you know, all my amens get hushed. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. I, I don't care how much celebrating you were doing yeah. prior to this, but when I start talking about you in it because of your own stuff, yeah. all my amens go on vacation, amen. Yeah. Yeah. 